Welcome back to Seavine Prayer Brigade and the Home Bible Study Group. I'm here with my co-host. We've got Joe Lynn live and I'm Linda Forsythe. And we've got a pretty important question to ask you. Are you under the illusion that you're in control? Are you thinking that you can figure everything out of your own accord and you're just smart enough, educated enough, uh, have enough experience that no matter what comes your way, that you'll figure it out all on your own accord? Well, I got news for you. As some of you may be finding out, you are not under control. And especially with what's going on in our government recently, it's like we've been given the illusion that we're free and in control. And we're finding out now just how much we've been played, given choices that uh, really is skewing us in a particular direction. We are being manipulated and driven. Without going into all of that, we also can talk about various things that are happening in our lives every day. Where we think we're in control. We have our routines. We have ways that we do things. And suddenly things just aren't working the way we expect them to. Well, we're going to be talking today about King Solomon. And in the Book of Wisdom, things that he had to say, and it, it, it was kind of eye-opening to me. I actually was reading it last week. And then JoLynn is going to speak with us about what we can do to make life a little bit better and to put our thinking in a little bit of a better alignment, not a little bit of better alignment, in alignment with what we are meant to do. Because the Lord knew the stuff we were going to have to be up against. Yeah. And so we want to do things our own way. Ah, well, I think we're getting our eyes open. So believe it or not, even though things may be kind of crappy right now, it might be a blessing. More one of a blessing than you realize that you're going to be going in a better direction. I'd like to read to you from the book of Ecclesiastes. One, and this is from the New International Version. Uh, Ecclesiastes is in the Old Testament. It's one of the books of wisdom from King Solomon. And it starts out, everything is meaningless. The words of the teacher, son of David, king of Jerusalem. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. The winds blow to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. All streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place the streams come from, there they return again. All things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear its fill of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new. It was here already long ago. It was here before our time. No one remembers the former generations. And even those yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow them. Wisdom is meaningless. I, the teacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. I applied my mind to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under the heavens. What a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless. A chasing after the wind. What a crooked 
cannot be what is crooked cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. I said to myself, look, I have increased in wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much wisdom and knowledge. Then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also of madness and folly. But I learned that this too is chasing after the wind. For with much wisdom comes much sorrow. The more knowledge, the more grief. So that's the end of that. And I looked at that and I go, well, that's depressing. Yeah. You know, you're, you're doing all this work and you're doing all these accomplishments and moving forward in life and right. being successful or whatever it is that you are striving for. Right. And if the story ended there, it would be very depressing because what is all this for? What point do we have in life? What is our purpose in life? If it was just that do day in, day out, it would just be like, there's no point. I think that's where a lot of people who don't know what their purpose in life is. They don't know the, the reason Christ created them, what their purpose in life is. They just end there. There's no hope. What a sad, depressing life. But one day God sent his son to the cross to save us from all of our sins, all of our guilt, all of our shame. And we don't have to live a life of, of desperation. We have victory because not what we've done, but because of what Christ has done. And I've been reading in Romans chapter eight. Some people say that it's the greatest chapter in the, in the Bible. And there is so much encouragement in there. And as I was reading through all of this, I came away with the, the knowledge of what Christ thinks about me, little old me. And I'd like to touch on that if I may. Um, now, Solomon, God came to Solomon and said, I want to give you anything. What would you like? And he didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for wealth. He asked for wisdom. So in that wisdom, we can take that knowing that all wisdom comes from the Lord. And he, he orchestrated that and wanted to share that with us through the different Bible, uh, Bible verses in the New Testament to explain who Christ is. So now there is no condemnation to those who belong to Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation. When we align our faith with his, we don't have, he, there's no condemnation. He paid the price for our sin and our guilt and our shame. And because you belong to him, we belong to him. The spirit has freed us from the power of sin. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we have. And in that body, God declared to end an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did that so we will follow the spirit. Um, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. If we, uh, and I'm kind of skipping around in Romans eight, there's so much encouragement about who we are in Christ. Um, we received his spirit and then he adopted us as his own children. And since we are his children, we are heirs with Christ. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share in his suffering. So I want to stop right there and touch on the fact that, that this life isn't about this life. It's about eternity. And that's where our hope is. So when we see things happening in the political realm, in our family realm, that's not what we want. Maybe we're having failed health or our marriage isn't what we thought. Maybe we're having struggles with our children or at work or whatever. Those are not our struggles because as we've said before, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. The enemy doesn't want us to know that we have victory. He wants to throw out <coughs> fear and failure and demise and all kinds of things to take our focus off of the promise that we have in Christ. We are heirs with Christ. We are his prized possession. He's nuts about us. 
God is nuts about us. And if we could embrace that thought, there is no condemnation to those who belong to Christ Jesus. This life isn't about this life. We're just traveling through to a home of eternity in heaven. And that's where our focus needs to be. That's how we can get through the sadness, the sorrow, the depression, the grief, the despair of what we see in the news, what we hear you know, in the news, just a lot of fear factor. We don't have to live in fear. We are victorious already. We have won. That is beautifully said. With the understanding of some of the things that you also touched on, it is through the Holy Spirit that we will receive guidance, not our own neurons and, uh, you know, what we think. Correct. Because the Holy Spirit knows the future, the past, now, it's all one. It's right. all one. Mm-hmm. And so when we stay connected to the Lord and uh, allow him to infuse us with the in- wisdom, the inspiration, right. the guidance, mm-hmm. the, you know, tap on the shoulder, the nudge. All these types of things, when we are absolutely connected and allow his guidance to flow through us, all what we can do is going, it it is miraculous. It literally is miraculous. Mm -hmm. You will be amazed what you can accomplish when you stop trying to do it. Exactly. Well, and even it goes on in Romans 8. Uh, verse 26, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is our helper. We don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the father who knows all hearts knows what the spirit is saying for the spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Now it doesn't say all things are good. It says all things work together for good to those who love God and are called. I love God. I know I'm called. So when calamity falls around me, I know that God is going to work it for my good. What the devil meant for evil, God means for good. That's a promise I can claim. And when you are attacked under a spiritual attack, receiving the guidance of what to do, right? how to handle it, right? When all things work for good for those who love the Lord. That's yes. right there. If, that's if you stay connected. You said something earlier. You really cracked me up. You said, did you know that King Solomon died a dummy? Yeah. <laughs> he was. You know, here he was, this guy. God came to him, said, I will, I will give you anything. And he said, I want wisdom. God said, okay. And so he operated out of that. God gave him incredible wisdom. We can read it in the Song of Solomon and such. And he was such a wise man. He wrote the book of Proverbs, which is filled with wisdom, but he loved women. Women were his downfall. The Bible says he had a thousand wives. He had a thousand wives and many of them worshiped other gods. And so he began to worship other gods. So he went from the wisest man of the world to the dumbest man in the world. God was not very happy for the fact that he was worshiping other gods. So. There's not a whole lot of wisdom when we don't listen to the people who surround us, who love us. We need to, you know, listen to what people are saying. So he, he was the wisest man starting out. He's the dumbest man when he went out. So, well, that's we, a really firm lesson right there because we yeah. all have gifts and talents that uh, that we have been blessed with. Yes, we not only that our experience and life situations have cultivated us, cultivated us, yes. prepared us, molded us mm-hmm. into something that can exactly handle what it is you're into right now. You have more than you know deep within you. And so just know that all these things that you have been going through, are going through, and what is coming in the future is prepared, has prepared you 
for such a time as this. I truly believe that. These right. are momentous times. And I have been meeting people with all different types of gifts and talents, observing. And some of the talents I know some people have, I don't know if it's through fear or what it is, but they're, they're afraid to use them or they're so caught up in their everyday job that they aren't doing, in my opinion, what the Lord created them to do. They're being diverted and pushed along a certain path to be kept out of the way. That can also be one of the devils of the plants, keeping you out of the way, busy, diverted, instead of doing what you're supposed to be doing. Sometimes maybe you'll be amazed if you just like push some of this other stuff away, listening, but do it with wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit. And you may be amazed at what yeah. you can do that intellectually right. you could have never figured out. Well, and when we think about the God of all creation, he created the whole universe with this, his spirit. That same spirit lives in each child of God. When we accept Christ as our savior, that spirit has been given to us. That same spirit who created all of heaven and earth and all the, the animals and everything in it, that same spirit resides in us. He wants us to serve him, but the enemy doesn't. So we've got this war raging constantly. If we were not a threat to the enemy's kingdom, there would not be this war going on. So there's a war with our timing. There's a war with what we fill our mind with. That's why it's so important to start in the morning, renew our mind every, every morning, because in the morning, his, what scripture says, his mercies are new every morning. And so when we fill our mind with scripture, I believe that's our armor that we put on for the day. And we can, we can handle the battles that come our way because we have focused our mind on Christ, not on what we see during the day or the words that come to us or what we see in the news, or, you know, some of them can be totally frightening because the enemy wants us destroyed, but we already have claimed the victory and how we do that. Our, our eternity is secured, but how we do that every day is we, re, we put on the full armor of God by renewing our mind with scripture, claim a promise, apply it and embrace it. He wants to know that we've already won the victory and the victory is through our faith. We get to have eternity with him. We, this, uh, this body is just a shell. Our spirits live on forever. And it's our spirit, our soul, that what all this is about. So it's not just the flesh and blood. We don't fight up against that. You know what, Jolyn, that was beautifully stated. Thank you. And next week, we are going to be talking about the book of Hebrews 11.1. And that is all about faith and how that has applied in the, in the past and what, even though they couldn't see what was coming, it was through their faith that allowed them to move forward with guidance and knowing that everything was going to come to pass, and it has. Yeah, can I uh, can I throw in a couple of verses um, that sure, I think absolutely. are very appropriate here? You know, God's love is never going to leave us, even if we have troubles or anything like that. His love is never going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So uh, Romans 8, 38 and 39 are very powerful verses. I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. That's a biggie. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. 39 says, no power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We have hope, not just for today, but we have hope for tomorrow. We do not need to fear this life. 
Outstanding. Thank you for adding those. Okay, everybody, um, please go to our website, c-find.com, c-find.com, and become a member. It would be very helpful if you did. I had put out some videos in the past that kind of opened up some eyes about some things that were happening that uh, somebody didn't like, and our website was taken down for well over a week. And That's spiritual it, warfare. That is okay. spiritual warfare. And it was an external attack. It was absolutely verified. And our volunteers worked, I mean, sometimes overnight, twice, two, two nights overnight, along with all during the week and getting this back up again. So we've got a lot of people fighting here to be able to not only bring you these shows, but also updates on the news aspect of things and uh, the back to the basics show that we have, you know, which is just teaching, you know, the practical aspects of everyday living that many of us have forgotten, gardening, knitting. Uh, <laughs> so please go to c-find.com, become a member and contribute monthly if you can. You'll get a newsletter. Okay, we'll see you next week, everybody. God bless.